October 1st school committee meeting starting. We're going to expedite this meeting because we have uh, two of our team that needs to take care of some family emergencies. So let me quickly call us to order and ask if I can get an approval of minutes for both the September 3rd and September 9th meetings. Motion to approve minutes for September 3rd and September 9th. Beautifully done. Second. All in favor or any discussion or changes? All in favor. All right. Thank you. Um, we are going to make some adjustments to the agenda. We are going to go, we're going to do number four, five, and then move to the business manager Actually, report. Actually, if we could do Chris first. The business manager report first and then the library presentation. Okay. That would be great. And um, we have to add a, po a first reading of a policy that I distributed to the school committee members. It's just uh, a first reading. Okay. Chris. Okay. Um, couple of items. This was not in your packet. This is the revolving accounts report. I just got the balances yesterday, so I put the report together, and I figured I'd just hand it out rather than email it. Uh, as you can see, of course, it's early in the school year, so there's not a, a lot really of uh, change between June 30th and now. Um, the only one that is a nice little change would be the lunch account where we've gotten the payments for May and June, and they brought it back up into the positive. So uh, we're happy to see that. Um, any questions on the revolving report? Okay. Uh, if we move to the expense summary, I, I really like looking at this report because it just makes me feel good when everything seems to be pretty much right where it should be. Um, you know, you might look at it, <laughs> excuse really me, <laughs> and, uh, and see some things that might make you scratch your head. If you look at, for example, teacher salaries, and you, you see that we're about almost 16% done with elementary school, almost 14 mm -hmm. with Hopkins, and, you know, you'd say, gee, we were one month out of 10, why aren't we only at 10%? Um, and just to, you know, kind of explain it, we have the school choice money that comes at the end of the year that we apply to that. So we're a little bit front loaded with the expenses. And then when we apply it to school choice toward the end of the year, it gets right back in line. So, uh, you know, when I, when I look to see percent used and I like to, you know, on, on some items, you like to see it pretty much with the percentage of the year that we've had. Um, some of them are out of line, but they're explainable. So that's, uh, you know really no cause for concern, which is nice. A um, couple of items I just wanted to point out. You can go to page four. We had the uh, contracted services for bus drivers. This was a, you can see an encumbrance of $2,400 plus. That was a new radio system that we had to get. Uh, the bus company got a new radio system installed on their buses. Ours was not compatible with it. So we bought a new um, radio set up for all of the buses and the base unit at the elementary school. Part of this will be transferred to encumbered funds from last year. I believe it's about $1,200 of it will be. So that'll wipe out most of the shortfall in that. And what I'll do is I'll just transfer um, some budget from one of the other bus items over to, uh, to cover that amount. The positive about the new radios is that at least they do offer better reception, which is you know certainly nice. It wasn't something we were looking to do, but at least when we had to do it, there's something that you know good that came out of it. If we go to page nine, uh, payment to collaborative programs, you can see is uh, you know we've we've spent eleven hundred and forty two percent of the budget in that. Um, all of that expense will be transferred to the grants. There is no grant report. We still have not gotten um, final approval on the grant amounts. So uh, once the approval is received, that money will be transferred over and we'll be back uh, in good shape with that account. And just kind of an FYI for you guys, um, with the telephone expenses, we're just looking to um, go in with the town and get one, uh, basically get one big account uh, our, our account would be separate, but we would going in. We would be going in with them to uh, see if we can realize some savings by having a, just a larger organization. Um, this so, is phone service, not a cell phones. Service. Actually, oh. um, you know, we have several uh, cell phones that the bus drivers all have one. Um, Jeff Mish has one. You know, a couple. Of, I think the principals all have one. 
Uh, not the principals. They don't have them anymore? I don't believe the principals do. I think okay. it is the athletic director, yes. Jeff Mish, the director of facilities, transportation coordinator, and bus drivers, to my knowledge. That I think correct. that's it. Um, so, and, and we have requests for a couple of new phones that were kind of becoming just unusable. Uh, we're kind of holding off a little bit on that until we can just coordinate it with the town, but the end result would be that we would see some savings. So, um, you know, it's certainly worth waiting a couple of weeks to, to see if that can work out. Um, and that is basically it. Uh, another FYI would be the generator bids are due on October 15th. So hopefully then we can just nail that down and, and get the generators in. Uh, you know, because they came in slightly under budget last time, I can't anticipate that they'd actually go up. If anything, I would expect they might go down a little bit just because everybody showed their bid the first time around, so now they might have to sharpen their pencils a little bit because everybody knows each other's bids, so might actually realize a little savings there as well. Um, so. We'll see about that, but I just wanted to let you know that it is in process anyway. So if it's opened in October, then if we assumed all went well, we'd see generators installed February? Uh, yeah, what I would ask them to do would be uh, to pour the slabs in October. Yeah. So they would do all the digging outside of Hopkins because it's going to be moved outside. They would need a replacement slab at... Hadley Elementary because the generators now are bigger than the one we have there, so the slab is a little too small. Uh, we can get all of that done while the weather's still warm, and then we basically have to wait for the generators to come in, which they said is about an eight-week lag. So, um, you know, you're talking November, December. Yeah, February might be. Of course, a lot of it depends on the weather. If we get three feet of snow, they might balk it. Uh, working outside to install those, but we will get them done as quickly as possible. Any other questions for Chris? Once the generator bids are finished with, we will be going out to bid for the bus as well, the okay. new bus. So. Pending a successful town meeting vote. No, this is the spring bus. Oh, the spring bus. Oh, good, good, good. good. Right, the right. I'm getting all the specs and everything. And Excellent. So we will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. staying. Okay. What are we moving to? Our Is library. It? Oh, okay. I thought it was time for public comment. Okay. Oh. A library presentation. Um, I hope you all have had a chance to look at the long range plan that I've developed. Um, the reason I did it is because there were some changes that I'd like to make in the library. And in order to get any grants from the state, um, the state does offer LSTA grants, and in order to get those, you have to file a five-year plan with them, long-range plan. So that's why I went forward with this. And plus, the policy, some of the policies that we had been using in the library were 10 or more years old, so it was time to update them and make sure they were okay. Um, I don't have a lot to say other than what is here. Uh, we did surveys of parents, staff, and students. Um, on page five is the needs assessment, some of the things that I hope to move forward with in the first year or two. And um, other than that, there's just some policies and methodology and so forth. Are there questions? Um, well, my only question is really for us is that, or maybe you know the answer, we have some library and book policies in the school committee policies. Did you cross-reference or do we need to cross-reference to make sure that our policies are matching? I was not aware of those policies, um, so I did not cross-reference okay. them, no. We'll, we'll put it on our to-do okay. list. Okay, okay. This is supposed to be um, sent to the state. The deadline was actually yesterday, but I told them we were meeting today, so I was hoping to get approval tonight so that we could do that. So. I like the long-range plan. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And I think certainly that we can, I know th there isn't anything in here that is at odds with the policies that we have. No. But um, we may want to add those policies just as... Yes. Yes. A part of your plan, if that yeah. makes sense. What are the policies having to do with, do you know? 
I think it is how, I think it's kind of how we evaluate books and when we get rid of them and how we get rid of them is mm -hmm. my memory. Is that yours? The right, district, not the school committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. Clear. Right. Oh, we yes, don't, don't but, it's, a, but it's in the school books. committee policy. Yes. Yeah, clearly, yes, we aren't making decisions <laughs> personally on yeah. which books and are up good or if we should update it to be in sync, you know, we can also revisit that right. too. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the, some of the stuff that I did improve exactly. here under the thing. So, yeah, right. So, a motion to approve this? Motion to. I'll take that as a motion and a Mayor second. Carter. Excellent. Any other comments or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you doing so it. Much. It's a great Thank document. You. Thank you. Can we just quickly do public comment and see if your brother has anything to say? He can't. He can't. He's not a resident of Hadley. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing happening in San Francisco that the residents of Hadley. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, 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 yes. Hadley, this is my brother, Mark McKenzie. Well, Our well. member of the public this evening. Yes, is what I put that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. So how much more do you want to do? So I think one thing that a student, we have in our packet that uh, one of our students representing the Gay Straight Alliance, GSA, has made a request to the school committee that the school committee consider having a change of practice around the robes. Um, so that is in your packet. And you may have had a chance to read that from Aurora Glant Wingate. And she is requesting that we no longer have two, she's not individually requesting this, the GSA is asking that the school committee consider that we no longer have two different color robes, but that we simply have one color of robe for our graduates. Because typically now it's one for men and one for women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. White for women, blue. Outdated yeah. practice, it's slowly making its way out of schools across the nation. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good and cogent argument. <laughs> I was just going to say, I thought it was a very thoughtfully put together letter that mm -hmm. obviously yeah. took um, a, a lot of time and thought and, and very well written. So, and a compelling argument. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. All right. Do we, is this a... It, <laughs> is this a school committee decision? I listed it under. Um, Let's I make it a school committee decision. Um, certainly, well, right. I just assumed that there, if people, you could be clear about where you stood on the issue by making a motion and taking a vote. Make, make a motion to approve a single color um, graduation uniform. Vote down. Second, for minimum. Second, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank and you what to the I GSA. did not hear, which is great, I will thank the, I recognize them in my report. I will assume that the students and staff, and with input from others, can decide what that one color should be. Mm -hmm. That you didn't state that you had a strong opinion about that. Uh, and I would like to definitely be have that reflected. We do not have a strong opinion. <laughs> 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 or at least I do yeah, not. Right. Uh, also, yeah. the attorney for the your yes. counsel for the school committee has requested an increase in retainer, and his letter was included here. Let me pull this out for you so I can tell you what his He's, increase is. It's a modest um, increase. Yes. So he is requesting an increase retainer to $550 per month. Do you know and what it is now? Yeah. It's 500 yes. And it has been forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> forever. Yeah, I, he is spending a lot of time in Hadley, yes. a lot of time. How do you yes. pronounce his name? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he would like. And that uh, is something that I would want, since it's counsel for the school committee, I would want the school committee to approve that. I would make a motion to increase the per monthly retainer from 500 to 550 for attorney to pray. And so, the, so the feeling is just that that's a very reasonable rate. I don't oh, know how much you It's a really reasonable rate. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was that's to starting October first, starting today, is what he requested, which yep. is fine with me as well. Yep. So you made the motion. Mm -hmm. Second it. Second. You have any more questions no, on that? that was okay. Good. All right. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 
So the motion was Roby and the second was Humera, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's get that right. With a thank you for yes. to attorney. <coughs> I'm going to call him Dupair for all the time he spends <laughs> in Hadley. He met with us today. He was with us today. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 550 a month is easily an hour or two of an attorney's time. And he was with us today for two hours. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, you created a district strategy on September 9th. And really, I suppose you've already approved it because oh. you approved the minutes. So um, that just to point out that included in the minutes for September 9th was the district strategy that the school committee put together mm -hmm. on September 9th. And so that will be a part of our district documents. It will be on our website and it will be part of our budget submissions. Okay. I did provide for you all. I, you have them to review. I did the PPI, so the performance calculations for MCAS. The very good news is we saw that at Hadley Elementary School, high needs students, the high needs subgroup, so students who are economically disadvantaged, students with disabilities, and students who are English language learners, their PPI last year was 31, this year it is projected to be 75. That is a tremendous gain. The overall PPI for Hadley Elementary School is projected to go from 45 to 75 from 2014 to 2015. The composite PPI does not reflect the annual because that's a four-year weighted average with the most recent year being worth 40 percent, the other 30, 20, and 10. But it certainly has improved. Unfortunately, Hopkins saw a decrease with all students of PPI going from 75 to uh, 61. I think, excuse me, yes, 75 to 61. Right. Uh, and I did not calculate the high needs because I have some questions for the department on how to do graduation rate with such a small group. But they did see a decline, although we did see some very positive things at Hopkins. I was looking more closely at the high needs data for mathematics today, and we did see a huge decrease in needs improvement and the warning categories and an increase overall all grades in proficient, a nice jump in proficient. Um, so that was positive, and we'll look at why we saw that, that downturn last year. I know the teachers have been looking at the data closely and trying to get a, an understanding of, of what happened. We've already made some, looked at the curriculum, particularly in English language arts in grade seven, appeared to be a problem. And we had made some adjustments, and MCAS is really good at showing us where we may be off with curriculum. It doesn't tell us anything about teacher effectiveness, it doesn't, but it can tell us a lot about curriculum and access to rigor and course words and coursework for students. So overall, I'm pleased. The overall district PPI increased, um, so that's a performance index. The, uh, the overall performance of high needs at Hadley Elementary and the aggregate group, all students at Hadley Elementary, an incredible improvement uh, in both of those groups and some things that we're going to look at at Hopkins but overall very pleased I didn't I, I believe last year I told you there's no way that's going to happen and right. it did so I'm, I'm in fairly fact happy. we told you last year <laughs> there's no it was a huge jump we're yeah. very pleased and uh, there is information about the parent portal a copy of something that was disseminated at open house it's the information that parents have and uh, the, the one glitch that we just had to work out was the company that previously, Edline, has just been purchased by some other company. And so we had to work out whether or not the new company was going to have the same Edline products that we assumed we were going to be using. Uh, we've heard that we can still get those products. So it, we're ready to go. That was the, the most recent glitch I think has been worked out and we should be, parents should be seeing this, I wanna say probably the, the, it, it, within the next couple of weeks, if not sooner. I mean, it's right around the corner. So that was information about the parent portal. Your personnel report is in there. Um, and I had presented this last time, but I'll just point it out for our audience. Our school climate and survey data at Hopkins. So even though we were disappointed that our uh, MCAS dipped overall uh, in terms of our performance index, we were very pleased to note that students who were surveyed in 2013 and 14, um, there were 61% of the students surveyed identified bullying and harassment 
as a problem at school. And in 1415, that dropped to 22 percent. And that was something that was very important to the school committee. So that's a significant decrease. That's a positive thing. Students reporting that school provides a safe, positive, and respectful environment and culture increased from 69 percent to 80 percent. We did see a dip in the students saying that they have input into important decisions at my school. That was previously 75% and it went down to 67%. And my guess is that the schedule change may have had a lot to do with those responses because that was a huge change and not all students were happy about the idea of that change. Um, our suspension data decreased also significantly, whereas in 13-14 um, we had 30 events um, of uh, kind of student suspension and um, out of school suspension, 30 events of that. That doesn't mean 30 different children, but 30 different events. That decreased to eight in 1415 and in school suspensions from 16 to zero. So we have seen some positive trends. And the, in our this is data. Um, a May or June surveying, mm -hmm. so it's Correct. throughout most. It's yep. reflective of most of the year. Correct. Correct, it happens at the end of the year. And then lastly, uh, I think first reading, there doesn't have to be any sort of vote, correct? Correct. You, what I passed out to all of you are Title I audit. So Title I programs are designed, uh, Title I provides us funding to provide academic support students, academic supports to students who meet certain criteria. We use a test called Dibbles Next. We use various tests to Gates McGinty and others to identify students who need additional support. And because these are federal funds, they have certain requirements and they audit our policies, practices, and uses of those funds. In our most recent audit, they said they needed us to change our supplement, not supplant policy, and that we specifically needed to say that we use these funds to supplement, not supplant the local operating budget. So what you have in front of you is the policy we had previously and added to that supplement and supplant language. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at it again on October 26th. And can I ask you a quick sure. question about um, going back to the student survey results? Sure. So on the student suspension data, there was also a kind of a flip in, with regards to the community service academic days, where before it was Correct. eight days and now it's 29 mm -hmm. days. Did the definition of what constitutes, I, I don't know if this is like the nature of the, mm -hmm. the punishment, whether you get out of school suspension, in school suspension, or community Correct. service. Correct. Did that change between those two years? Or is it just So we actively are trying to keep students in school. We don't yeah. want to use exclusion as a punishment. And so we've worked really hard to, in lieu of that, do various types of community service. I think I talked to the school committee about one that was particularly effective. So students who needed additional academic support, and these were a few, it doesn't matter what grade they were in, but we had some students who needed this support, and then we had some students who needed to, who had disciplinary infractions and needed community service, and they came in and tutored these students. So there were a lot of wins in that. Mm -hmm. One is that the students remained in school. We didn't have to exclude anybody. We had older peer tutors working with younger students, and that had huge social benefits that we saw that we didn't expect. It was much better than kind of sticking them with an adult during yeah. a, uh, spring vacation. Um, so yes, you do notice that. Thank you for pointing that out, that we have actively said we want to, we want to hold children accountable, mm -hmm. but we don't want exclusion. We just, there, there are things, there are acts that are so egregious that would endanger students and others. It's not saying that that exclusion is off the table, but it doesn't want it, we don't want it to be our first yeah. intervention. No, that's great. Thanks. Sure. Okay, I think that's that's, that's all you have. Do do you guys want to do do you have any building and building and grounds update? No, my CES update can we Okay. Yeah. And policy we did it we have a first reading of this. We may need to meet again a bunch of times throughout the year. Yes. Um, the only other thing to talk about is first let me confess and apologize that I completely forgot to type up our SWAT results. So I will still do that. 
And the next tri board meeting is next Wednesday, October 7th. I cannot go. I have a meeting. We Guilford um, sent me a text last night asking if the school committee could present the SWAT next Wednesday. So I cannot. I could have it typed up by then if anyone else would like to represent the school committee and is available next Wednesday, or I can ask uh, to put that off again. I can attend. I just may need, I don't know if anybody else is going to that meeting. I'm still in California. Yeah. I'll be in Idaho. When is it? The 7th. <laughs> <Saturday. laughs> Next Wednesday. Yeah. Next That's Wednesday? from oh. 6 to 7. We have some other ideas, too. I thought we were, were, were um, yeah. inviting them. Were you going to come? Them. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. No, I wasn't going to come. We were thinking of inviting them. We are going to invite, yes. right. Makes sense to our SWAT. To our SWAT soiree. Next meeting. <laughs> to our SWAT soiree. SWAT soiree. That's right. with the next meeting. All right. So why don't I say that we have lots of people out of town and see if the whoever would like to come to our October 26th, I believe, mm -hmm. meeting. Right. Yeah. That and then speaking that of the October 26th meeting, <laughs> it's yeah. a very big meeting, and I've been asked to go and present um, at a conference out of state. So I either will not be here or we could try to reschedule to another date, which I think we've already rescheduled. Oh, no, it was this Fred, one that we sorry. rescheduled. Fred is coming to that meeting too, right? Yes, so we would have to reschedule with him mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. I don't mind missing the meeting. And I don't mind rescheduling. I don't mind rescheduling. I'll okay. Be, I'll be in D.C. Oh, you'll on the 26th? Yeah. It's bat week. Is it bat week? You know, I, did week not know. Yeah, I did, did not know. I did not know. We'll be having bat celebrations on the hill. How about November 2nd? Mm. That sounds good. No. Who just said no? Ruby. Oh. Are you in D.C. that whole week? Celebrating no, bat back, week? Uh, I can, I'll be back uh, Wednesday. Ooh, that's my board meeting. Okay. Wednesday's your board meeting? Uh, th Wednesday, w I, th I have meetings Wednesday and Thursday night that... Okay. Sometime that following week? Fourth? Fifth? to the fourth. I could do the fifth. The third, we have a Unit D meeting, so maybe Fred could come to our meeting right after that. Oh, it's Election Day? Would that... Was that... Would that stop anything? In fact, it might make it more accessible. They have to come here anyways. It's mm -hmm. election day for what? I don't know. I just have an election. I it's a too. It is. Yeah. <coughs> the mid, the mid Maybe it's just the for the world, mid. for the country. <laughs> I haven't heard. So that's a Tuesday. Tuesday the third. So that do it. I've got two other meetings that night. So I, I can't do. Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So you cannot? Not, yeah, we could choose not to be televised. We could. It's All right, we can choose not to be televised, or we could. Who what, Rob, was Roby the only one that couldn't do the second? And, or we can go back to the 26th, and I'm the only one that can't. Oh, no. Paul and I are oh, both yeah, out. Yeah. I'm fine with the second. Roby, will you be heartbroken to miss the meeting? No. Yeah, I see we will be here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get it tattooed. <laughs> Should we say the second? All right. And yeah, that, that I will check with Fred. Okay. What day Thanks. of the week is that? Monday. 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 Okay. Are we what? starting at 5? No, it would be 5.30. 5.30. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone.